Xbox gamers in mass are using the success of Paul World of all games to flag what they feel are hypocritical statements about first versus third party exclusives. As always, the context is being left out here, so let's talk about it. Join us for why Xbox gamers need to drop the first party volume debate. This is the medicine. Let's get into it. What's up, people? What's up, people? What's up, people? It is your boy, MM2K of Geeks, Cloud Dosage, Hard Knock Digital Culture, you name it, we are there. Back again with another episode of The Medicine. And again, this one is called Why Xbox Gamers Need to Drop the First Party Volume Debate. Man, oh man, oh man. <laughs> <laughs> this is gonna be a fun one but before we get into all this do us a huge favor hit that like button hit that subscribe button and rock those bells for notifications please so you know when we're dropping these doses we appreciate it straight up and if i could do something real quick let me do this um this is the new mm2k gaming stream site we got a lot of great gaming content out there but i, I think a lot of people aren't familiar with what we're doing now as far as putting our game streams out on its own individual channel please check it out we got a lot of great stuff like we're doing remnant 2 doing the co-op stream with cold blood sensei we also got some spider-man clips we got cyberpunk we just got a whole variety of stuff and different playlists um, of us playing games elsewhere so definitely check that out mm2k gaming streams on youtube you don't want to miss it all right so with no further ado let's get into this one I have no notes written down. I'm doing this from the dome, from the from the dome piece. I'm freestyling here. This is a little bit of a rant, but a discussion that I think that we need to have nonetheless. I'm also going to be dropping a podcast that talks about this. Um, you're gonna see that the day after this airs. So definitely check it out. It's gonna air around 6 a.m. Eastern Standard Time on this channel. Uh yeah, so. Let's start with the claim here. Now, Paul World is an interesting case, um, not just because of the the sales that it has and all that other stuff. That's a whole nother topic. Um, Paul World is interesting because it is now being used as ammo in the AAA genre defining gaming debate. Um, people are saying, look, this game is doing fantastic on Steam. It's a console exclusive at the moment on Xbox. And because you guys over there use Baldur's Gate 3 as an excuse to attack Xbox, we can now use this as an excuse to attack PlayStation. Now, to understand this back and forth all together, you got to understand where this is coming from. This is coming from the AAA genre defining conversation within the console wars, okay? And here on this platform, we're not above it all. We don't sit there and say the console wars suck and stop console warring because we understand the proper context of the console war. The console war in its purest definition is the battle between gaming platforms. That's what it is. The execs talked about it at E3. So it's not this horrible thing when it's used in its proper context. It starts to become mucky and this thing that we don't recognize or don't want to acknowledge in a good faith basis uh, conversation when we start talking about the fanboy aspects of it. When people start waving these flags and making excuses and start changing the things that they definitively stand for in the sake of a brand when it comes to the console war. But the console war itself in its purest form is not an issue when we have situations like this which we're about to talk about that make the discussions around it an issue now what is going on here we kind of explain the dynamic of the conversation of people using paul ward paul world because another side used boulders gate three i don't want to defend any side um but what i do want to do is 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 point out the difference here and why context is being missed here when the other side used Baldur's Gate 3, that's because that was a triple-A genre-defining game that was hitting the console space 
that really shouldn't have been a timed exclusive, uh, you know, by incident at all. They were using that to tease the other side because the Series S, which that other side said wasn't a problem to development, had created a dynamic where Larian Studios could not drop the game simultaneously on Xbox as they could PlayStation. So PlayStation was saying, look, in our eyes, your first party lineup sucks. Look at Redfall, look at Starfield who pulled numbers at launch, but we feel like a lot of people finessed that game for $15 and they dropped it like a sack of wet clothes after they realized that the game wasn't worth their time. They're not holding on to um, Game Pass after the fact. It didn't do what it was supposed to do, right? You had developers and publishers and Tom Howard, Todd Howard like saying that this game was supposed to be played, meant to play like for years, like it was some games as a service title, but Bethesda games are played for a very long time. So we understand where they were coming from with that. Doesn't look like that's the trajectory that Starfield is headed at the moment. Maybe that can change, but that's another uh, video. With that being said, that's why they were using Baldur's Gate 3. Now, because of the bottleneck of the Series S, you can't get another banger on your platform. The banger was supposed to drop at the same time as ours. You don't have it, aha, uh -huh. this is what you gotta deal with because of the Series S and the crappiness of the Xbox from their point of view. It wasn't to say that, hey, if you get any exclusive content on your platform, a double A ripoff of Pokemon and uh, Zelda Breath of the Fire or any of the uh, any of the recent Zelda games with a lot of its elements. And it's a timed exclusive that's in early access. And the version that you have isn't even the version that everybody's getting creamy knuckled over, right? Like that that's not that's not the same as the Boulder Gate 3 argument. The Boulder Gate 3 argument again centered around. What they felt was the bottleneck around the Series S and you not having another banger in your lineup to kind of be a palate cleanser to the mess of Redfall and some of the less lesser impact that happened with Starfield. We got Spider-Man and we're and we're getting this banger too because y'all can't get y'all ish together. Ah ha 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 ha. That's the discussion. I don't think xbox people in trying to use this as ammo understand how they're being put in a continuous rope of dope from not only the playstation community but playstation themselves what am i talking about well let me show you this let, let, let's go here i think what perfectly illustrates said rope of dope is my response to this tweet this is a tweet from kid smooth right and Ken Smooth said in his tweet on New Year's Eve of 2023, he said that this will sound salty to me, but here it is. PlayStation 5 is outselling Xbox Series X and S three to one for absolutely no reason. They had one game this year. People say PlayStation is better due to games, but that's not true. Even when PlayStation doesn't have games and Xbox does, people still buy PlayStation. My response to that was, it sounds more like deception or you deceiving, deceiving yourself more than anything. Xbox fans who follow the console war stay victim to the Sony Ropa dope. What do I mean? We gotta go all the way back to last generation in order to, to, to follow this trend. Number one, it was claimed that you don't support indies, right? Then it was like, oh, you don't have the power narrative in your favor. Then, okay, you knock down those two check boxes. Oh, now you don't have uh, first party exclusives, right? While you're chasing this, Sony's in the background getting their first party games together for them to have broad appeal to people like me who used to make fun of them for the AI and, and some of the gameplay loop that was lackluster. They, they, they were working, they were listening to that and they were working on that in the background. And then we start seeing them drastically improve starting with games like God of War 2018, right? Then, on top of that, they were reassuring their second party and third party deals before Sean Layton left PlayStation or got booted out, whatever you, whatever you think happened. He talks about this in an interview. He talks about how 
PlayStation reassures itself in the console space, and then they go to their Japanese developers who all abandoned console gaming and started making mobile games. And they went to them and they said, hey, look, we're back on top. You can get rid of this whole mobile gaming craze that you guys are into. And now y'all can come back and y'all can start making games with us again. And the rest is history. And they did that with other people, with other developers as well. They were, they, while they were playing this rope a dope with you, they were shoring up the things that really mattered. And the only thing that matters that I have here is saturation brought by highly sought exclusives. That needs fixed. All right. So even though you may have PlayStation people point out your support of indies or the power narrative or not enough first party exclusives. And that's the thing that Xbox gamers are latched on. You guys got to understand that it's all about in this AAA genre defining space. And when it comes to selling your console to that, that, that group of gamer, we talked about this pyramid over and over again on this platform. When you sell those AAA genre defining games, you, um, you really invite the hardcore gamer. The, the hardcore gamer is like the cool kid or really the, the best gamer in your Call of Duty clan or whatever. So then that trickles down to the mainstream gamer and the rest is history. That's why these AAA genre defining games are so important. When God of War sells 18 million or 22 million, that's only a small percentage of the overall cons uh, consumer base on consoles. The overall consumer base on consoles is around 350 million. So how can those games have such an impact? Again, because they invite the cool kid and the cool kid sets the pathway for the rest of the, the, the gaming consumer base. So until you start outputting AAA genre defining games that invites the cool kid of the gaming community, you're gonna be stuck. I, congratulations to Paul World, shout out to them. They're doing phenomenal numbers. If they can avoid prosecution from Nintendo, hey, kudos to them, right? That being said, Xbox gamers, we were here again. We were here before. We were here with the, the game the Paul world is trying to suppress if they haven't suppressed it already. And PUBG. PUBG, I think, um, holds the record for Steam's most uh, consecutive player base, right? I could be wrong. They, they could have overtaken that. I don't know. But we were here with PUBG. PUBG came to Xbox exclusively during early access, and that arguably is more, if not definitively, at the time, a AAA game more so than Paul World. What did it do for Xbox? Nothing. <laughs> Nothing. It couldn't even help Xbox, the Xbox One X, that is, and the Xbox One. It couldn't even help Xbox when NPD that month that the Xbox One X released. It did nothing, all right? So again, if you're gonna have these debates about AAA genre defining gaming, I don't think you suit yourself in trying to throw Paul World into that narrative. It's great to, that it's over there, that's cool. But if you wanna be known as the bigger, better platform when it comes to those genre defining games, then you need those genre defining games from the AAA space. Celebrating Paul World, especially a version that's not even available on your platform at the time of this recording, does not suit that argument. Even if they used Baldur's Gate 3 in somewhat similar fashions, it's not completely similar. Baldur's Gate 3 is a triple A genre defining game and it only became exclusive temporarily because of supposed bottlenecks of your platform. That was what the discussion was about. That the bottlenecks of the Series S is prohibiting you from getting games that you're supposed to be getting anyway. You got to stay on topic because if you don't stay on topic, you don't know what to demand better of, of your favorite brand. If you like Xbox, there's nothing wrong with it. Who cares what I think? 
But if you want to have these triple-A genre-defining conversations, they got to do better. And they do better by having more than just a high volume of first-party games. They need triple-A genre-defining games, whether they're first-party, second-party, third-party, fourth-party, fifth column. It doesn't matter. I'm going to tell you something. Let me share something with you guys. There's a game right now, for full transparency, over the consoles, yes, I do prefer PlayStation. Even though my favorite way to game is on NVIDIA GeForce now. Love the platform. I'm a big cloud gaming enthusiast, if you didn't know already. All right. I was the guy that was um, promoting and defending Stadia. All right. So y'all should know where I'm at as far as cloud gaming is concerned. That being said, PlayStation is my favorite console this generation so far. I really don't see that changing, but hey, anything is possible. And my favorite game last year was Spider-Man 2. I think Spider-Man 2 kind of shook me at the core because I don't like the previous Spider-Man games. Still don't. This one was just so much more that it just knocked me off my feet. It was more grandiose than I could ever expect. I love it. However, there is a game. And again, I, I, I might just be in a certain column that isn't the majority, but still, I think in a column that's significant enough. There is a game that if it released last year, I would enjoy more. I would be enjoying more than that. I can tell, and I'm only playing the demo. What game is that? Let me show you. That game is Grand Blue Fantasy Relink. I absolutely adore this game. Now, this stream that I'm showing right now is you're getting a treat because this is from our member stream. And if you want to be a member, just go to uh, www.patreon.com forward slash PNTS network, PNTS network. And then you can get access to it because I got a 4K60 stream of this. It looks beautiful. A lot better than this, right? But I could tell that this game would be my favorite game of 2023 just by just this small vertical slice of the game. Now, why am I bringing this up? Because this is a third party exclusive on console, right? This is a genre defining game in that triple A space on console. It's not photo realistic, doesn't need to be. Everything that's Borderlands isn't photo realistic. Those are still triple A games. But this is a fantastic entry and it does, and, and it's, I like it more than the stellar Marvel Spider-Man 2. At the end of the day, Xbox gamers, it don't matter. First person, I mean, first party, second party, third party games, you gotta have an exclusive lineup that brings gamers to the seat, that brings those cool kids to the seat. It's like the cool kids in high school. I know I'm telling my age with this, but that had the, the cool bomber jackets. Now, they may be doing some nefarious stuff, smoking and drinking behind the school that you wouldn't do. But man, they look so cool with those bomber jackets. I want one of those. And not in the cool kid in the gaming community or the hardcore gamers, the gamers that want games like this, that want games like God of War and Horizon Zero, uh, Horizon Forbidden West, who wanted games like Mass Effect and Bioshock when they were timed exclusives for the 360, Halo 3, right? You need that genre-defining title at the top of that pyramid. And everything, everything else will fall into place. Stop falling for that rope-a-dope about, oh, you need to have so many first-party exclusives. And nobody cares about them if they're not bringing the, the hardcore gamer to the table or bringing anybody to the table. Who cares? And it's great that Paul World is exclusive in early access. Maybe there's some type of advantage that you can take, take of that. But if history is a lesson as it should be, we were here with PUBG, y'all. Stop having grand, uh, delusions of grandeur. Stop it. You want to be talked about in the AAA drama defining space, just got to do better in that area. And I would implore Xbox if I'm you. Look, if you're going to make games, if ABK games are going to be multi-plat, if you're going to be making games more in a double A space that are going to fill up Game Pass, that's fine. 
but I really want that triple H genre defining stuff. And if that is out of your personal scope of what you can craft, that's okay. Just put some money to the side to, to get some games like this, to get games like Grand Blue Fantasy, to get gang, to, to get the mass effects and the Bioshocks again, even if time or heck, I'm going to tell you my most anticipated Xbox game, even if it's a timed exclusive, even if it's only for a few months, it ain't nothing first party, especially after that showcase, because all I see is double A affair. It's Stalker 2. Proven game company that can make a, a AAA game. Xbox is getting that exclusively. If that game pans out to be what they said it's going to be, that can draw a lot of people to the platform. We need more games that are of the Stalker 2 scope. And if they can't produce them themselves, if they got to scale back, scale down the ambitions of Hellblade or keep it what it was last time, fine. Do some partnerships to bring that to the box. So first party, second party, it doesn't matter. Whatever is the best way for you to bring the best games, let's do it. It happens, it so happens that for PlayStation, their best way to do it is to, is to output their first party. You gave them enough time and opportunity that where they worked behind the scenes and created some great dynamics with their first party so the best exclusives they can output are their first party that isn't the case with you now you gotta know what you don't know and you don't know how to do that <laughs> you know what i'm saying not at the moment you need time for that it's okay but at least do some partnerships that that'll fill in the gap in the meantime stop falling for the rope -a dope just get a great lineup damn it to bring people to the table that's it from your boy let me know what you think about all this in the comment section below because like i always say who cares what i like what, what i think i'm so i'm so obsessed with this this game i'm talking about relink um who cares what i think but if you did like what i had to say check out the links below to follow me they will again lead you to geeks cloud dosage hard knock digital culture and more with all that said peace have a wonderful gaming day